Hi, my name is Andy Park. Welcome back to this channel. In this video, I'll show you how you can create a survey with Microsoft Forms. I've put a timestamp in the description below, so feel free to jump ahead to the parts that you're interested in. To get to Microsoft Forms, go to your browser and sign into your Office 365 account. Choose Forms from the Applications list, and if you don't see it here, open your Application Launcher and select it from there. We're going to simply click this button to create a new form. Although the default choice for me is New Form, you might see New Quiz as a default. In that case, just click on the down arrow and select New Form from there. Before we get started, notice there are two tabs, one for questions and one for responses. We're creating a survey, so we'll stay on the Questions tab. The first thing we want to do is create a title for our form. We'll call it Meeting Survey and give it a description. We have the option to insert an image by clicking on this icon. You can search for an image from the web or upload it from your computer. I'm going to choose the latter, navigate to My Pictures folder, and select an image file. Then hit Open. Now we can start creating questions for the survey. When you hit this button to create a new question, you're given a few options. Let's go one by one. Choice. In the choice option, we can ask a question, then provide a list of options for users to choose from. The default is two options, but of course we can add more. If you choose add other option, it'll allow the user to enter their own answer in this field rather than selecting from the pre-listed options. We can also toggle these two switches to allow for multiple answers or make the answer required. If we expand the three dots, we see there are additional options. Shuffling the choices will change the order in which the options are listed for different users. This is to prevent the same first option from being selected disproportionately. Here we can make the choices a drop-down rather than radio buttons. And we can add a subtitle if we choose. Lastly, we can add branching. Branching is a method to trigger specific questions based on the answer the user chooses. Maybe I'll make a separate short video about this later. As we create the survey, we should periodically check the preview to make sure that the survey design is working out the way we want. We can preview how the survey will look on a computer versus on a mobile device. Simply hit back to go back to the design page. Text. So this is straightforward. We ask a question and the users just type in their answer. The answer field has a 4000 character limit. So if we think that the answer will be longer than that, we can switch this button to enable long answer. Ratings. Here we can ask the users to provide their responses in the form of ratings. We can change the levels of the rating system anywhere from 2 to 10. I think the default option of 5 will work for most situations. And if you want, we can change the rating symbol from star to number. If we click on the three buttons for additional options, we can select label and add description for the ratings. Date. We can ask a question pertaining to a date and the users can select the calendar to choose the appropriate date. Pretty straightforward here. We can access more question type by selecting the down arrow. Ranking. In ranking, you can list up to 10 options and have the users rank the options using the up and down arrow. Likert scale. The Likert scale is used to measure attitudes and opinions of people, like how much you agree or disagree with something. If we have a series of opinions we want to collect on a scale, we can use the Likert scale rather than creating individual questions. So here, we can create a series of statements for users to react to. 
and change the options to measure to which extent they agree or disagree with the statement. File upload. We can also collect files as part of the survey. We can specify both the number of files and the size of the files users can upload. Net Promoter Score The Net Promoter Score is generally used to measure users' experience for a product or service by gauging how likely they are to recommend the product or service to a friend. At the one end of the scale is not at all likely, and at the other end is extremely likely. Sections Sections help organize our surveys and give context for the users. This is helpful especially for a long survey. We can also copy the entire section along with their questions if we're using the same questions for different sections of the survey. By the way, if you move your cursor just below the section headline, you'll see a gray box. And if you click on it, you have the option to input your titles as well as add pictures for the section. Let's preview what we have here. If you want to change the order of the questions, we can click on the question and use the up and down arrow to reposition. We can also change the survey theme and select a color theme or a background picture. If we're happy with the survey content structure and design, we can finalize the survey. Let's go to the three dots and select settings. Here we can customize the survey settings. For example, you can specify who can fill in the surveys and define the start and end date. Now we're ready to share the survey and collect responses. We can copy the link and paste it in our communication tool of choice like email, text, and Teams chat. We can also create a QR code, which is a good option if you want to have a printed QR code that users can scan with their phone to get to the survey. We can get a code to embed in our web page or start an email message with the link already embedded. Teams. If we're sending this survey to an existing Office 365 group tied to a team site and channel, we can actually add this form as a tab within the channel so that the team members can access the survey more easily. Suppose we're sending the survey to everyone in this Project A Teams we can select the general channel, click on the plus symbol to add a new tab, then select forms. Here we can choose to add an existing form, select the appropriate one and hit save. We can also post to the channel about this tab so everyone is notified. Viewing survey results. Earlier, I pointed out that there are two tabs in Forms, one for questions and one for responses. Let's click on the Responses tab to view the survey responses. On top, we see a dashboard summarizing how many responses have come in, the average time that it took a user to complete the survey, and whether the survey is still active. And we can see the total average of the survey responses below. We can click on the View Results button to see individual survey responses. And if you want to analyze the data, you can open the results in Excel. So that was a comprehensive overview of Microsoft Forms. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks and bye for now.